Again this week, the world watched as an American city went on a rampage against itself. The right to protest has always been an essential part of America. Consider how we venerate the Boston Tea Party. But when a protest turns into looting and senseless destruction and even murder, how is that justifiable? Or could it be that in 21st century America, the expression of frustration and dissatisfaction is expected to include violence? We look at that and more in today's edition of Midday Sunday. Good Sunday morning, everybody. We're delighted to have Leo Terrell with us. I'm particularly happy because I was on your radio show a couple times and you were <laughs> nailing me with questions and now I get to do the same to you. No, I don't. <laughs> Look, let's, let's, let's define some of our terms. Um, when do we call the sort of thing that we saw here, the sort of thing that we saw 23 years ago in the wake of Rodney King, uh, the summer of 1965 after mm -hmm. Watts? Right. Is it a riot, uh, a revolt? What's the terminology? You know, if I'm going to be very honest, I call it, it is a riot. You know, people will use other names to call it, but when you have destruction, looting, killings, arson, it's a crime. It's a riot. Mm -hmm. It's people who are acting irrationally and committing crime, trying to use it as a pretext for something else. But I vividly remember, particularly after Watts, mm -hmm. there were all kinds of efforts to come up with all sorts of other um, names. Mm -hmm instead of riot, euphemisms instead of riot. You know, Is that like taking the, 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 the smell off? It, it, tr uh, the attempt to, yeah. trying to put something uh, on a, 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 a item that, does, that smells horrible. This situation regarding uh, what happened in Baltimore and what happened in this country or in LA is just a situation where people are acting out. People who are frustrated, trying to express themselves, but they're expressing themselves in a criminal manner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other thing that we need to define is the word thug. There's been so much concern this week about that as a, as a, as a euphemism for the N-word. Your thoughts? As an African-American, I do not equate thug to the N-word. The president used the thug, the thug word. The mayor of Baltimore used it, and then she recanted. I, I'm not offended by that. When I think of thugs, Tony, I think of people who are committing criminal acts. I, I don't have a problem using that word, describing the conduct that occurred in Baltimore when people were acting in a criminal manner. They were thugs, in my opinion. But why then does it even become an issue? Uh, again, are we try is somebody out there trying to yeah, divert? There, there's someone out there trying to divert this political correctness. It's inappropriate when you have total chaos. And what we had on Monday in Baltimore was chaos, absolute chaos. And we're trying to pacify those people who are committed these crimes, these rioters. We're trying to say, oh, we we're trying to calm them down by saying you're not as bad. They were bad. They were mm -hmm. horrible. Uh, and I hadn't planned to ask you this, but since we're talking about it, what are your ideas, your thoughts about... Uh, police Chief Anthony Batts. We, you know, he was the chief of police here in Long Beach for a time. You mean the police chief of uh, Baltimore? Of Baltimore. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you, I am impressed with the idea that they were able to get an investigation, collect the evidence, and present it. I, I, I'm sort of jury out yet because if he was in charge of this police force, he has knowledge of what was going on before it happened. So uh, the jury's out on him because for me to say that he had no knowledge of these officers' prior conduct, I find it hard to believe. And to think that he had no awareness of the culture, a culture that tolerated things. And that's the problem here. You have an African-American police chief who is presiding over this police department in which the community is saying is bad. And yet we tolerated it up until the time when there was a fatal death involving Freddie Gray. Mm -hmm. The fact that Baltimore had has uh, an African-American chief of police, an Africa, uh, African-American uh, mayor, does that change the dynamics of it compared to, say, Ferguson or Los Angeles? No, no. Let me. Well, you know what? It, it, it takes an argument away from the media who wants to play a black-white issue. Here you got a black mayor and a black chief. But police misconduct is not a black and white thing. It is misconduct of a nature that affects everyone regardless of race. And this is why when the mayor is black, the chief is black, they don't get a pass. And, and yet people want to give them a pass because of skin color. I will not. They presided over a city mm -hmm. where a police department was out of control. Mm -hmm. But Leo, you and I are both sons of Los Angeles, right? Yes. And uh, some weeks ago on this program, was talk I was talking about how growing up in Boyle Heights, East L.A., uh, the cops, the police would eventually inevitably stop us for something. And the last thing that any of us ever wanted to see was, uh, was a Hispanic officer coming out because we knew he was going to be tougher on us 
than his white partner Absolutely. because he was going to prove himself. Yeah, he had to establish himself. And you know what, Tony? Those days, hopefully, in Los Angeles have changed. There's more of there's more Hispanics, more African Americans. The problem here is they still have an affirmative obligation not to take on the mindset of those who they're trying to impress. Mm -hmm. And that still exists in L.A. They're still trying to impress those individuals who are non-African American, non-Hispanic, mm -hmm. and that's a, a concurring problem in Los Angeles. Look, I, I hope producer uh, Kathy will understand, but we're going off on another tangent mm -hmm. here. Because no again, you and, you and I remember Los Angeles where, you know, I hate to make distinctions, I, it's our community, but the people who lived in your neighborhood and the people that we lived, we all got along together. Yes. We went to dances together. We, all these sorts of things, and then it was gone. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. We had a common bond. You're right. African American, Hispanic bonded together, went to activities together. There was no problem when we were growing up. And then there's been a division, a, a sort of a, a fight for this small piece of pie, and we're at each other's throat. I don't get it, but it's happened over the last 10 years. A, a, a fight for, for turf, political turf, territorial turf, residential turf between minorities. I don't get it. When we're struggling in the same boat, we're fighting to throw the other one off the boat. There was a minister um, at a church in right, uh, right next to Nickerson Gardens back in the 80s when there was so much trouble there. And he used to say, you know, some of us came here on slave ships, some of us were already here rowing around in canoes, but we're all in the same boat, and if we don't learn how to row together, this sucker's going to sink. Well said. Well said. And, and you know what? When we look at where we are right now, have progress improved? Have, you know, we look at South L.A., South Central L.A., and there's a lot more to be done. And there's areas of South Central L.A. that has reminisce 1993 and even go further back to 1965. Sure, sure exactly. And this is the problem. All right. Let's get back to what we were originally talking okay. about in this program. Protest is one thing. But when it starts, when it, and, and we can almost understand maybe tossing a few rocks, a few bottles, maybe breaking a window. But when it goes beyond that, and especially when it's destruction and looting, doesn't that diminish the value of the protest? Absolutely. We lose the credibility of the, mo of the, of the movement. You know, you're, you're, you're fighting for a cause, i.e. the death of Freddie Gray. What happened? And then you use that, that, that goal to try to destroy and loot. What happened in Baltimore? really diminishes the credibility of what they're protesting about. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened on Monday. Now, the question here is, will the community grow now after the incident of the charges being filed by the prosecutor? Mm -hmm. That's but, the key. Uh, isn't there anybody, um, isn't there anybody saying, look, you know, this is wrong. We, this is not the way to accomplish our goals. It seems to me, Tony, that the <coughs> mayor and the chief took a pass on the first day of this week, last week, when they allow the looters to loot and to and to destroy the community. What hurts me more than anything else as African American is when we have rioters riot and destroy the black community. Exactly. You know what that means? That means these <coughs> companies will never go back and invest. We're, do, we're complaining about how we're being treated, so who do we hurt? We hurt our own selves in, the, in, in, in destroying businesses that are so reluctant to come into the community in the first place. Where's the sense to that? There is no sense. There, I, I, there's no sense. It repeats itself. We talked about the riots. We talked here in L.A., 65, the 93 riots, <coughs> destroying our own community. I never understood that. I never will. And it hurts me in the deepest part of my body to see black people hurt black people mm -hmm. in destroying property. Look, I, I don't want to anyone to think that I am um, tossing uh, wood onto a fire, creating trouble. Mm -hmm. But there were so, I remember being at Florence and Normandy oh, yeah. and watching that and thinking to myself, how would this be different? How would the city be different if the people who are here looting the, um, you know, Arts Chili Dogs right. and, and, and the liquor store, how would it be different if they were at the Topanga Mall instead? Well, I can't even envision it. I can't envision that situation happening to, to, to Panga Mall. Remember when the, the 93 riots start moving towards areas outside of yeah, South yeah. Central? And all of a sudden you saw a wall come up. Exactly. And I, that's why I can't see it. I don't even see that happening in other pockets. I see it only happening in areas that are depressed, the minority areas, the people who are trying to, who are saying they're struggling. It happens only in their area. I don't mm -hmm. get it. Maybe if we take a break, we can figure it out. Let's try to. All right. We'll do that. We'll be right back in about two minutes.